Exactly. Let me just say something to that, because I, I think uh, this kind of discussion which has gone on for a very long time around sounds a bit cynical in a sense. In, in fact, it's like the tragic situation of 1994 isn't considered even a, a violation of human rights. It has now gone into the background. Those who are responsible for it, those who are associated with it, are now talking about something else. According to them, the situation in Rwanda is that of human rights violation even more than that tragic situation. I, I think that's what we are talking about. So well, just for example, there just, was uh, an Amnesty International Rights Report in t the lead up to the 2017 election you, that talks about opposition politicians, journalists, human rights defenders being jailed, physically attacked, even killed. I think you're interested in Forced into exile or silence. So I'm just interested in I think you are your interested in idea of that assessment Raising your, your views to the audience so that you influence them by yeah, the, what well, you're the European asking. Union Why don't sees you itself very much as an exporter of, of human rights and a defender of human rights. Why so can't you let me answer this? I'm very interested in Otherwise, your Otherwise, you, you are going to ask and then answer yourself. I'm very interested in time. your answer. I'm giving you some context no, on why I'm giving, asking. You're asking and giving answer at the same time. So but please tell me, what do you make of this assessment? I think it's, it's just ridiculous because there is nothing like human rights minus these things we are talking about. What we are talking about in terms of development, these are human rights. Mm. Development, schools, education, health, and uh, food security and you know, when you see now the level of poverty has decreased almost by 60 mm -hmm. percent. So we, these people, these human beings with improved lives and participating in that themselves to improve their own lives gets lost in all, what the whole list you've been spelling out as if, uh, you know, what is in Rwanda is, is really hell. In fact, forgetting the hell that we have gone through, that we stood against and sorted out when you were there just talking about mm -mm. more or less nonsense. Because Do you reject the accusations, for example, It's for rubbish, national... absolute rubbish. You, you reject Rwanda that. is completely different from mm -hmm. what it was 25 years ago. In fact, maybe you need to be looking around in Europe you are violating people's rights. When we have this problem of people being bundled and sent back to sink in the Mediterranean and so on, and so many people being mistreated in mm -hmm. your own countries, why don't you talk about your human rights and stop just offloading everything? Well, this is a development people. conversation, so no, in the context no, of this, development. You are not the one to determine what conversation okay. or what points to raise in any conversation. We are asking questions, this is what I'm saying, you are asking questions and you are giving yourself answers. You really need to stop this uh, superiority complex nonsense about human rights. You, you think you are the only ones who respect human rights or others, it's about violating human rights. No, we've fought for human rights and freedoms of our people much better and more than anyone, including you people who keep talking about this nonsense. Where we have taken our country from and where it is now speaks for itself. The rest of the story just comes from this complex. You know, the, 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 these two worlds where there are people who know anything, everything about human rights and all kinds of things and another world where people are just people who don't know but these are our human rights it's not uh, uh, when we respect the things we respect in our countries it's not for you it's not for anybody else, it's for ourselves but it's not so universal you don't see it there. you don't, yes it is universal but you don't mm. see it there if it is universal and you believe it mm. then you don't become the judge yourself you don't start telling the others what to do, what they should not do, or that they are, what they are doing is not to your satisfaction. Who are you? Well, I'm not Who sure if we're talking about me personally. Well, you are the one actually raising these questions. So I think you better interpret it properly so that it is well understood. Okay. I could see you are asking the questions in a manner that you want to influence the ones listening to us. But that's not correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm raising it once again in the context of the United Nations Development Goals. No, United Nations is us.
You see, United Nations is not something alien somewhere else. Yes. It's actually us. We participate. And the framework for this entire development. And by the way, I had been leading the Millennium Development Goals before Sustainable Development Goals. Mm. I was the co-chair of that with other leaders and some of the leaders in Europe. Mm. So you, you, you don't turn around, it's like you want... So you believe that there should be scrutiny on human rights in Europe, in Africa, no, in I believe countries. that you shouldn't be there belittling Africans or leaders of Africa who are trying oh, to... Oh no, but the best. conversation about migration is a real conversation about human rights. So you believe that there are valid human rights concerns to be taken into account in this conversation? Even in Europe, not in Africa. Not in, in Africa. Europe. In Europe. In Europe, not only in Africa. Not, of course. Yes. Well, thank you both very much. I Unfortunately, that is all we have time for. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda and the EU's Development Commissioner, Neven Mimitsa. Thank you both for your time. Thank you as well.